Second lesson, James chapter 1 verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Brethren, have you heard that? Know this, my beloved brethren, that everyone should be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. That is why. That is to say, when you have patience, provocative words will be spoken against you. You will be called a thief or apparition, but you should not respond. Because if you speak while you are angry, your words will be destructive. The scripture says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. That was in Proverbs chapter 15 verse 1. It is on these grounds that we are now advised to be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Because this is the weapon that our Lord Jesus Christ, the mediator of this new covenant, used to overcome the world. This same weapon is being given to us if you have a wife who would not obey you, be patient with her, do not be angry, do nothing to her. If you have children who are heedy, do not inflict any corporal punishment on them. Do not drive them away and do not curse them, but rather be patient and bring them up in the admonition of the Lord and God will change them. Everything by prayer and supplication. If somebody who is indebted to you abuses you because you demand for your money, be patient and do not be angry. Whether your creditor comes to beat you up in your house to disgrace you and treat you with, with utter disrespect, Neither complain nor be angry, be patient with him. Whether a girl whom you sponsor in school and spend a fortune on refuses to walk according to your instruction and is pregnant, please do not drive her away. Be patient with her, do not get angry, but take it to God in prayer. If you have a wife who is not easily who is not easily pregnant, be patient with her. Do not complain and do not go in search of another wife. Take it before the Father in prayer and watch what the Father will do. Do not take any action on your own. Since God has kept all men as commanders in the war front, a commander should understand the fighting techniques of war in detail. If we receive this gospel and practice it, all the inhabitants of the world will be in peace. Let us imitate our Lord Jesus Christ. He was called a demented fellow, but he neither argued nor was he angry. When he said, I and my father are one. The people took up stones, clubs and guns against him. The people who rose against him were those he had healed and of their different infirmities. It was there that he asked them, Which of these good works do you want to stone me? If Christ was angry, would he speak with such gentleness? To one of them our Lord Jesus Christ pointed and said, You were dead. Is it because I raised you up that you want to kill me? 
he said it was not. To another, he said, you were blind. Is it because I restore your sight? He replied that it was not because of his good work. Christ told them, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him and said, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that you, being a man, make yourself God. Our Lord Jesus Christ asked them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Emulate Christ. It is not calling upon the name of Jesus that matters. The important thing is to learn of him. The scripture says, Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Have you ever heard of our Lord Jesus Christ quarreling openly? Have you ever heard of our Lord Jesus Christ engaged in any fight with any person? Even though Christ knew that Judas Iscariot was the treasurer, who was the treasurer betrayed him? Did he quarrel or fight with him? There is no other source that we have to draw our inspiration apart from the life pattern of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is a man just as you and I. It is because of his pattern of life that he has been able to all the flock together when he learned of Judas's plot he neither beat him up nor disfellowship him Christ did not suspend or was angry with him if he had quarreled or fight or complained and questioned Judas he would have failed brethren let us learn of Christ in all these circumstances, in all these circumstances surrounding him, of all the things done to him, he did not complain or get angry. When he met the man possessed with devils coming out of the tomb, exceedingly fierce, so that no man could pass by that way, and he called the evil spirit to depart from them, the people of that city besought him that he should depart from their course. He did not argue or get annoyed or question why they demanded his exit. But he quietly left. When our Lord Jesus Christ was a young man and went out to visit his friend, the parents of his friend had the children in a room when he asked where his friends were the parents answered that they were out he, uh, he asked who's those who are those talking in the room and he was told that they were piglets making funny noise he did not make any arguments but quietly left them saying let them be piglets right from the time he was young the people regarding the people regarding regarded him as a demon and would not 
and would refrain other children from having any association with him. But when they opened the room and found little pigs in the room, they ran after him shouting that those in the room were his friends. He said, let them be my friends. The children became human beings again. Refrain from anger and doubting. Be slow to speak and slow to wrath. If somebody invites you to a chat, give ear to him. If he speaks disgraceful or provocative words or even abuses and curses you, be patient with him. Do not bulge or respond. You cannot be a man of God, nor can you believe anything. If you are impatient and quick to anger, you have heard Moses say, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever kills shall be killed. But our Lord Jesus Christ says that whosoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Realizing the situation, how do you think that you can be angry and will not say, Thou fool? or Raka to another person. How will you tell somebody thou fool and will escape the danger of hellfire? How will you get angry and the Holy Spirit will not depart from you? The moment the Holy Spirit departs from you, you will reach the end of the road. Be patient. It is for this reason of his mercy and humility that all men throughout the world are called upon to realize their thinking and receive that glory which had been kept for you right from the beginning of the world. If you are, uns if you are unsuccessful in any of your business plan, do not be angry, do not complain, but have patience. If you struggle to obtain a means of livelihood, but the money does not come, do not be angry, do not murmur against God, but keep calm. If assistance does not come to you from any place, do not be angry, but be patient, for help will come to you from the Father. For all those who hope on the Father, he has never deceived. He will never deceive. The only condition is that do not be angry any longer and do not complain. Anger does not bring any good thing to man, but instead of it but instead it brings destruction. It is said on the day of judgment we shall account for all the evil words that we speak. It is good for us not to be answerable because obedience is better than sacrifice. It is on this basis that we are advised to be swift to anger and slow to wrath and slow to speak. Illustration The Patience of an Owl. You have heard the story of how the hawk caught the baby of an owl for food. God asked the reaction of his mother when the young owl was caught. The hawk replied that the mother owl was silent. God asked if the hawk knew the thoughts of the mother owl and advised that the baby owl be returned to the mother. The hawk returned the young owl. God advised the hawk to go out for another prey. This time round, the hawk picked up a chicken. The hen rose up 
who are cried and shouted and pursued the ark. The hawk narrowly escaped and promised not to undertake a similar trip. God asked the hawk for the end's reaction when the chicken was taken. The hawk reported that it narrowly escaped death. God said to the hawk, that shall be your food because that was all the end could do. Up till today, is that not the food for the hawk? The fastidiousness of a he goat does not prevent it from being sold. The whites refer to the blacks as those who can only bark but cannot bite. Realize that an angry man cannot succeed in any undertaking. A verbose and loquacious man cannot achieve anything. Experiment right from today, even though you may be quite aware of a person offending against you. Neither respond nor get angry and you will see the outcome. Even if a person promises to kill you, Indulges, indulges in the preparation of concoction against you, curses and abuses you, calls you a wizard, an apparition, or a mermaid, or even slaps you. Do not respond, but maintain your quietness. If there is anyone of you who practice the gospel of today, he will realize its benefiting effects. It is a minor gospel, but very significant indeed. I have put the gospel up today before men, because today is men's anniversary, but it is also affects the women, because like a local adage says, when a madman runs away with your loins, cloth, you too, become mad and when you run naked after him right now men and women behave like right now men and women behave alike because men have indoctrinated women and children with this way of life everyone is angry and no one subjects himself to another as you get angry with another person, abusing and cursing, it means you are imparting to him the kind of lessons you want him to learn. In time to come, he will respond to your outburst. If you have either a wife or a child who neither talks nor insults you, but you are erratic, you have succeeded in teaching him insolence. Actions speak louder than words. Your way of life is what you teach others. If you are fond of drinking and every day you send your child to buy drinks for you, you are teaching the child to drink without realizing it. If you are fond of sending your child to call a woman, it means you are teaching the child to be, you are teaching the child the art of prostitution. If in the morning you beat up a child, the next day you beat up another, you are indeed teaching them how to beat. If you are patient and tolerant, you teach them patience and tolerance. For you to tell somebody not to drink, but you are drinking, means you are not teaching what you do. Therefore, you deceive when you teach men not to drink. If you drink and teach others not to drink, every day will, every day will drink because you are actually teaching them to drink. 
That is why an English dictum has it that actions speak louder than words. Your action speaks louder than your empty words. Brethren, I do not intend to take you further. Let our golden text be read again. Golden text, Galatians chapter 5 verse 26. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Brethren, have you heard that? Let us not be pompous. Let us not provoke one another. Let us not be envious because these things completely destroy the world. These traits have eaten deep into men, women, and children alike because whoever joins himself with a harlot one flesh with her since you had been a pompous arrogant envious person who also provoked people your wife children and others under you will adopt the same pattern of life flee envy provocation and pomposity why do we provoke one another it is because of pomposity why are we pompous? It is because of envy. Why are we envious? It is because of hunger. Envy is not good. Hunger is not good. Pomposity is not good. Let us desist from pomposity, from provocation and envy. What should we be envious of? Heaven and earth belong to God. And the earth and its fullness belong to God. If we practice the first lesson and refrain from anger and malice, we will neither provoke nor envy and there will be no doubting. If we practice the second lesson and we are swift to hear, slow to wrath and slow to speak, do you not realize that we will not provoke people? There will be no pomposity and peace will prevail. Wisdom makes a man to puff up and become pompous. To claim to be all-knowing is what you find in the world. This explains why we do not obey the instructions of others. For this reason also we get angry. It is because of our pomposity that we will always want to hear our views in the gathering even if after even after he had said the same thing you argue that since the other person had said something you ought to say something also do not offend if you find somebody putting on a red or yellow garment, you will want to do likewise. When a person drinks, you want to drink. If somebody commits fornication, you want to do the same. On this basis, we are advised right now not to be envious. Remember when our Lord Jesus Christ asked Peter, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom? Or tribute of their own children or of stranger Peter said unto him of strangers our Lord Jesus Christ said unto him notwithstanding let lest we should offend them go thou to the sea and cast a hook take up the fish that first cometh up and when thou hast opened his mouth Thou shalt find a piece of money, take it, and give unto them for me and thee. Why is it that you have no hope of any income, but you rent somebody's house with the promise of paying 20 naira rent every month? How will you pay the rent? Why is it 
that you have no gainful employment or assistance of any sort from anybody but you approach a woman and ask her hand in marriage. How will you marry her? A certain book asks. What is it? When is it good for a man to get married? Is it at adolescence or adulthood or at old age? If such a question is posed to you, what will be your answer? When should a man get married? All these concerned men, since women have very little part in it, whenever you can take good care of your wife and children, whether you are an adolescent or a young, at any time you know you are able to take care of a wife, you can marry. Right now, you have no money. There is no hope of any source of livelihood, but you impregnate a woman. What will the woman and child eat? Provoke no one to anger. The woman is equally stupid. You surrender yourself to a man who approaches you without care. When you are impregnated, what will he use to care for you and the child? Let me at this juncture defend the woman. A woman thinks that a man who sums up courage to approach her for this purpose must be a man of substance. Like a local adage says, if you want fresh fish, Go with bright coins. Accordingly, women think that since the man has made the move, he has prepared. One thing about the women is that they accept things on their face value. Before a man goes to a woman, he will borrow a coat from his friend and shoes and dress himself with these items women want to see before they believe when they see a man dressed up and boast that he is a custom officer or a business tycoon that is the beginning of trouble a woman will will not her approval that she has found Mr. Right or Mr. God sent. The situation is that when a woman discovers a man's trick, if she finds a gun or machete, she will not mind cutting off his head. Brethren, do not provoke others anymore. Do not continue to jump from one woman to another. In your act of deceitfulness, in your unpreparedness, you are without a might. But everywhere you deceive and break women's heart, is that not trouble that you are causing? You do not buy clothes for your wife at home. She cooks for you and takes care of the house. But you forsake her for another woman outside and even abandon the children for her. Do you not realize that you are provoking them to anger? Can you realize the trouble men have brought to the world? At the moment, the children you desert are parading the streets. When they come to you, you will urge them to go to their mother and call the mother many names. You say they are the replicas of the mother. Instead of telling the child that you have no money, you will drive them away and base your reason on what the mother had done. By so doing, do you not provoke the children? Men are the cause of trouble 
in the entire world. The punishment that men face, the provocations that they cause in the world are beyond human description because of pomposity, your conditions notwithstanding, you carry your shoulders high up and parade yourself as a man to whom a woman must subject. You count yourself a man and that man are scarce and that men are scarce and you commissioned to be pompous and to provoke others. People complain that women cause trouble in the world but I tell you that women do not cause any trouble. If the fork does not take out a piece of yam from the pot to the mortar, the pestle will not pound it. If you did not approach that woman, maybe on the way or in her father's compound or anywhere else to deceive her, she would not have followed you. No woman can force a man, but a man can force a woman in different tactical ways, including threatening her life. Can you not observe the suffering that men, women, and children are facing? This suffering extends to various generations. Many women here have neither work, nor father, nor mother, nor kid, nor kin. You impregnate her five times and she gives birth to children for you. After which you drive her and the children out. Where do you want her to go? In the face of this, you are going about your normal ways. What good does it bring to you? I want men to have a second thought over the issue so that they can retrace their steps. So long as we are not pompous and do not provoke others to anger and we are not envious, it means we have second thoughts. In lowliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than himself. Let us listen to the Holy Spirit and let us be led by the Holy Spirit. If we submit ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit, we will experience real peace and prosperity in all things. And all things shall work out well for us. Brethren, a stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. I do not intend to be tedious with you. Those who have ears to ears, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.